Lisa Clark here. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, this is about the horse that I've been working on for the last, oh, in total, probably about 20 hours on the horse. So over a few days. Um, it was interesting. This is a true how-to video because I have never, ever put these two medias together for one project. Uh, meaning the the canvas is a, was a white canvas that I gessoed over um, using gesso, which is like this, this kind here. This is the brand I like. A um, couple layers of gesso and then a couple layers of black acrylic paint. And then I traced on the horse with charcoal pencil and went on a journey using the pastel pencils on top of the acrylic paint. Um, it turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. One thing I would do different, and I probably will work with another black canvas like that, uh, is use like a fine, fine tooth sandpaper and sand it down after you get done with the uh, acrylic paint part, the black acrylic paint. Um, this will help get rid of little brush strokes, little imperfections on the canvas. I did run into a couple issues with some brush strokes on the canvas, but um, I, I, I got over it. Uh, there was no way I was going to start all over again at that point, but in the future, I think I will use like a sandpaper, a real fine grit sandpaper and sand down those little imperfections to give me the more uh, smoother um, surface. You want, a, I mean, it's pastel pencils and um, trust me when I tell you I used lots of layers of the black, gray, and white charcoal pastel. Um, a lot of blending, using blending stumps. Um, so you need kind of a surface there for all that, for all those layers. But I do think I would go and go ahead and try to just get rid of some of those brush strokes from painting on the acrylic paint. Um, or maybe I'll do a, a black pour over the, the canvas. That's an idea. And just avoid all the brush strokes altogether. We'll see. Um, but however, so I did use some pastel pencils with this horse. This is the brand name I used. And these are the pencils here that I used. Primarily the black, the gray, and the white. Um, I did use uh, probably some burnt sienna, a different other red, um, like an amber orange for the um, horse's eyes. Uh, but you'll see that in the video. And if you scoot on over to YouTube, on under the video, there's a description with every single piece of material I used to create this horse portrait. Um, very pleased with how he turned out. Um, I will definitely use these two mixed medias together again. I think they're fun. They're a little challenging, but I like that. It's a good fun. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, again, I get the question what fixative to use when you're using soft pastels. I do use Spectrafix fixative. Um, I'm not sponsored by them at all, but I, I like them. I will continue using them. Um, however, I don't use them, use the fixative in their bottle. I will go buy a fine mist water bottle like this and just mark it so you know what's in there. Um, this reduces the droplets that you could get if you used it straight out of this bottle. So this gives you like a fine mist. Yes, you can still get some droplets out of here, but it's less likely to happen. So I do use those for uh, when I'm when I'm stopping for the session for that for that session of the pastels. I, when I'm done for the day or I'm gonna walk away for a few hours, I'll do a light mist to that, and that just kind of helps seal and place the pastels because they are pastels. They're very powdery. They will move around. Um, if they get bumped, if the fan goes, you know, whatever. Y you want to put that fixative on there. Um, also, sharpeners, pencil sharpeners. People ask me that all the time. I just use a real basic one for my soft pastels, just like this. Um, you get these on Amazon. They're they're very basic. It's a metal pencil sharpener. They will, they're very kind to your um, soft pastel pencils. Uh, Faber-Castell also uses or also has one out. I'm a little less likely to use this for my soft pastels, but I will use these for like my Faber-Castells, um, my graphite, um, that are harder lead. So this one's good for those. Don't, don't use one of these. This is an electric pencil sharpener. These will eat up your soft pastel pencils. They will eat them up. 
um, no, don't, don't, don't use these. This is good for a uh, hard lead, like graphite pencils. No problem. Works really well for those. Um, the blending stumps I just use, uh, let's see. I just get packages of these here like that. Um, they come in different sizes. Here's a different one, bigger, bigger stumps, blending stumps. Um, I don't bother trying to sharpen the tips on these. It's not worth it to me. I just get another package. They're really hard to sharpen. It takes too much time. Unless somebody could tell me how to sharpen there. I don't know, but I just buy new ones. Um, <laughs> the other pencils I used were basic charcoal pencil. Um, I sharpened it real good. And then um, this one as well. I use this this one as well. Again, all these will be, will be in the description on my YouTube channel, Therapy Art For You. Um, I, I, like I said, I really did learn as I went with this one. It was fun, uh, a little challenging at times. I got frustrated because I didn't, you know, I, this was new. This was all new for me. So, but I think it turned out really well. Um, I will definitely try this again with a different kind of subject. I like the negative space with the black background. That was fun. Um, but yeah, if there's a media that you would like for me to test out for you, um, certain papers there's tons of different paper brands out there uh, different medias uh, spray paint acrylic paint um i've never done anything with oil paints um but hey i i will i would i would try it out why not um any kind of color pencil different there's different brands of those uh different papers there's tons of papers uh for different kind of media i can uh, either tell you what i think or i can test it out um on a video as well um, I'm always out there willing to learn new stuff too. Um, it's fun. Uh, it's all been a journey. This whole experience has been a journey, uh, setting up this YouTube channel, learning how to do videos, learning how to edit. Oh, thank God for my daughter, Nicole. She has been so helpful and so sweet and so patient with me. I'm sure she gets frustrated with me when I go get all upset because I don't understand something, but she's been there for me. I really do appreciate her. So enjoy the paint, the painting of this horse. If you have any questions, shoot me a comment. And thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate you. Go visit me on YouTube. I really do, really do need that. I need the subscribers. Uh, it helps me out a lot. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, so this is video number one of the horse series where I have been using pastels and charcoal pencils on an acrylic surface. Um, I, this was new for me. So definitely a how-to video because it was learning for me too. Um, in this video, I will... Uh, give you in the video what I'm using for each move that I make um, but in the uh, other videos that follow this I did not do that but you can find everything I used in the description below this video and we'll tell you exactly what brand what pencil what paper or not paper I'm sorry what canvas uh, what gesso I used for the canvas the acrylic paint um, everything uh, down to blending stumps and various charcoal and pastel pencils. Uh, but anyway, let's jump in. We are experimenting and I, I actually started off not real sure, but I quickly decided this was kind of a fun mixed media. I liked um, how this stuff laid down on top of the acrylic. I will say definitely, um, like I mentioned in the, in the video before this started, uh, Maybe I will use a fine grit sandpaper to, to sand down this canvas to make it a little more smoother. But at any rate, um, I will tell you there's a lot of layers involved when you're using this kind of media on acrylic. Um, it took a lot of layers. Um, and I say that over and over again, and I apologize. Um, <laughs> but it did. I can't stress it enough. Um, you really just kind of have to feel it and, and just kind of jump in. Um, this pastel white pencil, a great brand. Um, I really like the way I could sharpen the end really, really well and use it for details that I needed to come out in the ear and in, in the eyes, around the nose, the nostrils. You'll see as we go on. 
Um, but I will tell you, every time you lay down um, some pastel, you will most likely have to use a blending stump to blend it out and get it to kind of conform to what you were wanting to do. Um, I was able to do um, a white layer of charcoal pastel and then go right to the gray and then go right to the black and then go to the blending and then, yeah, you just kind of keep going. Walk away from it. Take a minute. Take a break, you know, from trying to get it perfect because it's not going to get perfect right out of the gate. You, you're going to have to give it um, a lot of patience, a lot of um, passes at getting that texture you're looking for. At least that's what I was learning throughout this process. I took lots of breaks. Um, yeah, take lots of breaks. <laughs> um, sometimes I'll take a picture of what I've gotten so far and walk away, you know, just go make dinner or, or make something and, and then look at the picture when I'm relaxing. And it helps me to see where I need to make little tweaks and changes. Um, I found that a lot of the powder would blow off onto the canvas. That's me using a kneaded eraser trying to get rid of it. And then I learned real quickly, you know what, let's just let that go. Um, I'll tend to that when I'm done with this, with this picture. Um, you can even see the streaks of pastel right there on the horse's head. And I decided, you know, that's okay. Maybe I'll blend it in and it'll, it'll be okay. And it, you know what, it really was okay. It turned out just fine. Um, so yeah, you just kind of have to kind of go with it. Uh, keep trying, keep going at it. Uh, pastels are pretty forgiving in my opinion and I could go right over it with a different color um, I could blend it out um, and try again so just don't give up um, I definitely had no clue what I was doing at the beginning of this and by the end I had a pretty good good idea of what it takes to get the um, the perspective I was going for on this one but it was a lot of fun <laughs> there was some frustration I ain't gonna lie uh, but overall I, I enjoyed the mixed media. I really did. Um, I was really pleased. There were times when I thought, oh, I don't think I could do this. I might've messed this up. Um, uh, but it just, just keep at it. I just kept at it and lots of support. It helps too. Um, <laughs> uh, my husband was pretty patient with this one. Um, my oldest daughter, Nicole, she's very patient. She's also an artist. Um, she was very patient with me too. I mean, I usually end up spamming her with lots of pictures of, Hey, what do you think? How's this going? Um, so it's good to have support like that. I did mess up on the pupil on this eye originally, initially, I have a bad habit of not looking at my reference photo and I really need to stop doing that. <laughs> I need to start looking at my reference photo. Anyway, this is me trying to correct it. Um, it needs to actually be more like a flat, a uh, rectangular shape pupil, not a round one like we're used to doing with just about every other animal living being. The horse pupil is actually like a, a, a rectangular laying down on its side. So I did end up having to, to kind of tweak that. But again, I say pastel is pretty forgiving. I was able to go in and fix that. No problem. Um, generally speaking, when I'm doing the eye, which is one of my favorite parts of any living creature, uh, I will try to lay down that whatever I want to have like that re white reflection. I will put that in first because I don't want to, to paint over it, you know. Um, so definitely, I, I definitely advise doing that. Block out your, your reflection spot first and, um, and then just be careful when you're, you're working around it. Um, I did have to sharpen these pencils constantly, especially when I was getting into to fine areas like the eyes. And I use, um, and that's in the description as well. Um, be very careful what sharpener you use with your soft pastels pencils because they are soft. Um, they break very easily. You don't want to use like an electric sharpener. Um, most sharpeners are just going to eat them up um, and you don't want that. Um, you know, any art supplies, you don't want to waste that if you don't have to. So uh, at any rate, um, yeah, I just use a, a, a small metal manual pencil sharpener. I don't, um, I don't use anything that's going to break that pencil lead down. Um, I'm already going to be doing that all by myself by laying all the charcoal down, all the pastel. So, 
At any rate, you can see me feverishly working on this eye because I did mess it up. So I got to move that pupil around and it just takes hmm, a couple passes before I'm decided, okay, that looks more like it should. Um, and shame on me for not looking at the reference photo a little more often. Um, it's a bad habit. I know I gotta, I gotta break that, but, uh, but yeah, definitely use a, use a reference photo. Um, it will help you place things where they they need to be. Um, the best advice I ever got from any artist was draw what you see, not what you know. Um, and I got to take my own advice on that. So this is the end of part one. Um, you definitely subscribe. I would appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of the day and look forward to seeing you in part two. Thanks. Bye.